my feeling is that the human race will will use the last drop of oil squeezable from the ground. In a fuel cell, especially fuel cell operating on, on hydrogen, you count every electron, so to speak. And the electrons that were used to produce the hydrogen by electrolysis are now returned ready for an electric motor. I can see a change in the, in, in the view that oil is not only a material to burn inside our Fred Flintstone machines for cars, but something that's, that's going to be used more in chemical industry. And hydrogen will be a ever larger proportion of the, of the uh, energy economy. In a simple way, what we are doing is we're drilling into a core of a volcano and getting the energy out. Uh, it's very simple once you know how to do it. Superheated groundwater down there comes up as steam with enormous thrust. And we use the, the steam to uh, turn the turbines in the engine room, generating electricity. We now, in 2012, have about 82% of our energy renewable. There's only 18% to catch up with. In order to, to sort of fill the gap, we needed to address automobiles. So we started Icelandic New Energy. The whole thing culminated in the fuel station in Iceland, refueling station in Iceland, initiated in 2003 at the Shell premises. Between 2003 and 2007, we had uh, uh, three hydrogen fuel cell buses in operation. And then since then, we have had uh, private vehicles in service. And here we have a, a complete production of hydrogen and distribution. We can see on the left, the container with, is the electrolyzer, which actually produces hydrogen from water and releases the oxygen into the atmosphere. You just connect yourself, use the card reader, and your car is filled up in three and a half minutes. By 2015, we'll hopefully see a fleet of cars in Iceland, in the hundreds, operating on fuel cells and hydrogen. We cannot hope to see an isolated energy economy based on hydrogen in Iceland. The world will have to follow, and we will follow the world.